Hello, beloved. This is Tracy L. Moore, a.k.a. The Purposeful Poet, bringing you spiritual truths through poetry. I also bring you greetings from Chesapeake Christian Center in Chesapeake, Virginia, where life is unlimited. My purpose is to encourage, uplift, and inspire you to be your best for Christ. And I'm here again today with more Motivation on Monday. That's M-O-O-R-E, Motivation on Monday. And the poem for today is entitled, No Condemnation. If condemnation is what you feel, you must know in your heart it's not even real. There is no condemnation to those in Christ. He suffered and bled and he paid the price to deliver us from all condemnation, which is just a figment of our imagination. Condemnation is an illusion of the highest degree, employed by Satan to deceive you and me into thinking we are never good enough, but that is a lie. We must call his bluff and let him know we won't fall for it. We refuse to fall prey. We must ignore it. When we feel condemnation moving in for the kill, we're rejected and then begin to fill our mouths with songs of deliverance. The spoken word of God will become a fence all around us to give the protection we need so the enemy of our souls will not succeed in pouring condemnation on us like rain, causing our souls to feel horrific pain. Remember, you have Jesus' righteousness redeemed from the curse. You're truly blessed. In spite of what you do or don't do, there's no condemnation. The rule applies to you. Though you have flaws and weaknesses, sin is separate from you as far as east is from west. You've got to know who you are in Christ, for he made the supreme sacrifice so you could triumph over the evil one and be completely free of condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Romans 8 and 1. Beloved, the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's Romans 3 and 23. And when we miss the mark, sometimes we struggle with condemnation. Just the other day, I battled with it. When I forgot to attend a meeting I had scheduled, the enemy began to heap condemnation on me and the fight was on. So when Satan begins to inject condemning thoughts into your mind, how should you respond? Here are some steps that you can take. Number one, receive the conviction of the Holy Spirit and repent before God if necessary. Now, you know, conviction is different from condemnation. Conviction lovingly points out your wrong with a goal of making you better. Condemnation points out your wrong with a goal of beating you down and making you feel you can't ever do or be any better. The second thing we need to do is take responsibility for our actions. We need to refuse to blame others. If you blame others for that which you need to take responsibility for, you will never grow because you're in denial. Number three, learn the lesson and determine what you need to do differently the next time. Everybody makes mistakes, but purpose in your heart, you will not make the same mistake twice. Number four, extend a heartfelt apology to the person. Let them know you are sincerely sorry for what you did. Number five, pray for the person's heart to be healed if applicable. If you have emotionally wounded a person, ask the Holy Spirit to minister to them as only he can. Number six, do what you can to make amends and make restitution where possible. Sometimes there's nothing you can do, but when you can make amends, by all means do so. And finally, number seven, reject the condemnation of the devil. Saints, you got to remember, you are the righteousness of God in Christ and Jesus died on the cross to take your punishment. Therefore, there's no need to punish yourself. After you've done all of the above steps, you have earned the right to be at peace and get your joy back. And now you're at ground zero. You can forgive yourself and move forward. So why is it so hard to forgive ourselves? I believe Creflo Dollar said this, but could it be that our righteousness is more rooted and grounded in our own works than in the finished works of Jesus Christ? Maybe we haven't truly received God's forgiveness. If we haven't really exercised the luxury of receiving forgiveness for ourselves from the Father, we'll find it difficult to extend forgiveness to ourselves and others. However, when we know that our righteousness is not in what we do or don't do, then we'll reject condemnation and more readily forgive ourselves and others for weaknesses and shortcomings. Beloved, if you have missed a mark, made a mistake, or offended someone, express true remorse over the wrong you committed against that individual and you've done all that you can do to make amends, what else can you do? Nothing. And it's time for you to place the situation in the hands of God and drop the charges against yourself. You can exhale and go forth in peace without condemnation. After all, nobody's perfect, not even the person you sinned against or those who saw it when your humanity spiked and you made a mistake. Amen. 
Now let's go out and make it a good week and don't forget to check out my blog at tracyelmore.com and while you're there you can sign up to receive my bi-weekly newsletter as well. I think it will bless you. Thanks for tuning in. This is Tracy L. Moore aka The Purposeful Poet signing off and I look forward to seeing you next week. May God bless you real good.